Joyce are with us. Harley, they have a beautiful marriage, a, a, a beautiful marriage, but a beautiful ministry to help marriages. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You've marriage got them too. both. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, Marriage Builders, you can visit them online. Uh, it's one of the most helpful sites for marriages that, you'll, that you will find. And uh, I, I've resourced them, I looked at them, send people there. It, it's a wonderful, wonderful way. Uh, we're in uh, the fourth program in a series of five. Tomorrow will be our final program. If you've missed them and you're just finding out today, please visit us online and uh, resource these programs, share them with friends. We have books that we've been offering and today we're featuring Love Busters. And it's, it's been very, I mean, this is practical stuff. And, and it's just very, very helpful. I, we, just before the break, I left asking the question uh, because we're dealing with friends and relatives and, you know, siding with your spouse. And, uh, you know, sometimes your spouse is wrong and you want to side with your family because you know they're right. Okay? Sticky situation. Sticky stuff because I agree with my family and he is wrong. Mm -hmm. is, what do we do? Well, the, the rule that I have is, is carefully worded. Never do anything without an enthusiastic agreement between you and your spouse. <laughs> I've heard that some you'll yes. know, before. You'll notice that there are, there are no issues of morality in there. <clears throat> it's, it's that you have to agree or you don't do anything. <laughs> this is because you're married. This is because everything you do in life is going to affect each other. And if you can't agree, if you can't agree, you have to go back to the drawing table. You have to negotiate some more before you can actually implement a plan that either one of you wants to do. Now, um, I spend much of my time helping couples understand how they could possibly implement that rule in a marriage where they're both going in terribly different directions. But in that particular question, what if your family is right and your spouse is wrong? Mm -hmm. I would say you have to frame the question differently. Your, your family has one opinion, your spouse has another. Whatever it is your family wants, which may be well and good, for whatever reason isn't to the liking of your spouse. Mm -hmm. And you have to find a solution to the problem that, that gets your wife's enthusiastic agreement. See, I mean, she's got to agree. To, so, it may very well be that you don't go to Christmas. You don't go to your family for Christmas. It may be that you don't go to the church that your family wanted you to go to. It may be that you don't name your child something that your family wanted you to name it. You basically have to make a decision that you and your spouse can agree on, even if your family is the wisest family on earth, having all the answers to every problem that anybody could possibly have. You have to come to an agreement with your spouse. The alternatives... The alternative to that, where you say, just do what I tell you to do, and, and someday you'll know that I was right, and wow. you'll really appreciate yeah. my, my great wisdom, will lead you to a loveless marriage. Yeah. 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 So, anyway, the, the point is don't let your family and friends come between you. Now, the second area of conflict that we can talk about is career choices and time management. They come together. It's in okay. the same basket. And that is, what are you going to do with your time? How are you going to budget your time? And one rule that I have about time is that you have to have 15 hours of undivided attention. Where you and your spouse... A week. A week. Are alone meeting four emotional needs. Affection, conversation, sexual fulfillment, recreational companionship. You do those things 15 hours a week, just the two of you. You give each other undivided attention. That's 15 hours. I recommend another 15 hours for what I call quality family time. You and your family are together as a unit 15 hours a week. Where you are teaching your children the most important values that there are in life. And you do it by example. And you do it in the activities that you and your spouse have. You have a job. You have other things that you need to do. Families today have to budget their time just like they have to budget their income. 
just like they have to budget their money. Mm -hmm. And my feeling about a husband and wife is that they've got to sit down every week and go through the week and look at every hour that's being spent. Do we agree enthusiastically about the way we're spending that hour? So a career choice is going to determine the schedule for the week. The career choice may in fact yeah. prevent you from having 15 hours a week of undivided attention. It may prevent you from having 15 hours with your family a week. It may prevent you from doing what I consider to be the most important things that you could be doing with your time. Why have a career that's going to ruin your marriage and your family? See, So I'm always saying time management and career choices are a big deal. You need to find a career that meets your time management objectives. Mm -hmm. What is the most important thing to you? Put them in your schedule. Make sure that important things are in your schedule. Make sure you're in agreement. And the question is, your career may end up having to go. You may need another career in order for you to achieve the things that are most valuable. It's really interesting as a marriage counselor, I notice that there are certain careers that lead to very bad marriages. What are they? They're careers <laughs> yeah. that separate a husband from a wife. And the, the longer you're separated, the more likely the marriage ends up with infidelity or divorce. Yeah. And, and so the basic idea is that time management is a big, big deal. Every Sunday afternoon, I tell you, 3.30 every Sunday afternoon, get your schedules out. Plan your week. Make sure that everything that's in that week is something that's been agreed upon with enthusiasm. And make sure that you're spending time alone with each other. Make sure you're spending time with your family. And then everything else supports those two objectives. Yeah. yeah. You know, this, this is very important, you know, and it seems as though things got quiet, you know, be, because all of a sudden people are saying, wow, that's 30 hours. Yeah. Yep. There's going to have to be some change in my life if, I, if I'm going to find this, you know, that type of a thing. But, but here's the thing. Are you, are you really wanting help? You know, are, are you really wanting your marriage to thrive? Do you really want to enjoy? See, what we're not introducing here is law. You know, what we're introducing here is something very practical, you know, that, that will help you to journey towards the marriage you've always wanted. And there are so many things that you've introduced into your marriage and into your lifestyle that have been robbing you from what you've desired most. It's come between it's you and your spouse. Yes, it's, yes, it's, it's, it's come between. It's, it's preventing you from having the marriage that you want. Right. Uh, and so, I, I mean, yeah. this is just some real helpful stuff, you know, and it's going to require something from Change. you. Right. And it'd be wonderful yeah. if you could just snap your finger and say, I have good intentions. It's going to happen. But I go back to the physical exercise and wanting a new body and a new look. It takes time in the gym. It takes, it takes time to change your diet so you get the outcome that you want. Yeah. And we're saying to have the marriage that we know will make you the happiest while here on this earth, it will take the time. Yeah. I just want to insert, it's not 15 hours in one block of time. You know that, yes, right? Yes, okay. yes, yes. <laughs> We've actually had people say, what? 15 hours in one chunk of time? How can this be? No, not so. No. But it's every week. Every week, every week. right, exactly. Yeah. 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 Now it, a third it, but, area. But, but again, yeah, but, what we're talking about is the investment. Absolutely. These are the right. deposits. Things that are and important to invest in. And it will reap a harvest of righteousness. Yeah. It will mm -hmm. reap a harvest of joy. It's you, you see. I'm tr what we're trying to do is benefit your life. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to put rule and regulation over you. You know what I'm really trying to do is help you. You know to get back on the right track. You've you you are living with some destructive habits. You know, and, and those are the things that are robbing from you. You know, just, just like eating bad food. Mm -hmm. Well, the problem is, is you're ingesting food that's actually killing or, or robbing from you, making you sick. Well, you've created and you've brought into your marriage habits, you know, that are actually destructive and they're hurting. Well, we need to kind of break those and begin to replace them with some habitual, intentional, discipline, 
you know, that we're going to begin to create and build the marriage that we want. And then all of a sudden, it will become effortless. Yes. There will be effortless victory and you'll live a life you know, at rest in peace. Yeah, a lot, a lot of people will tell me that what they want to do is feel better about their spouse. They want to stop hating their spouse. Yeah. They want to start loving their spouse. And they want to, they want to know what they can do to change their attitude. And my, my point all the time is that it, it, it's the way you're living. It's the habits that you have. It's what's going on in your schedule. It is your lifestyle that is affecting the way you feel. If you want to change the way you feel about something, you have to change what you're doing. And a lot of people, they, they, they think, I don't, I don't want to change what I'm doing. I want to continue doing what I'm doing. I want to continue with the lifestyle I have. I want to continue with the friends I have. I want to continue with the job I have. I just want to feel different. Yeah. And I tell them, that's not the way it works. Yeah. Psychologists know that you're not going to feel different by doing the same thing. Right. You're going to feel different by changing your behavior, changing your spouse's behavior, you're just going to have to start depositing love units instead of withdrawing them. Now, the next area of conflict that a lot of people have is this: is 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 not just time management, but financial management, financial spending. How do you make your decisions regarding your finances? Again, policy of joint agreement. Never spend any money unless you're in enthusiastic agreement about it. That means you're going to have to budget. You're going to have to sit down with each other. You're going to have to figure out what you can afford. Here's my income. Here's my expenses. And you're going to have to agree on every item. And you're going to have to honor those agreements. You're going to have to stick, stick to the budget that you have. Now, in a lot of marriages, uh, a person will say, well, I'll let my spouse take care of the finances. My attitude about that is that's a risky thing to do. Yeah, don't, don't turn the blind eye. It's a risky thing yeah. because your spouse, part of it. You, your spouse needs your opinion about the issues. Otherwise, your spouse will get all the things he or she wants and you won't get what you want. And so then you'll start sneaking things. You'll start writing checks. You'll start spending money your spouse doesn't know about. You need to get into a routine where everything you buy, every investment you make, every time you deposit money, every time you withdraw money, every time you, that it, it's a joint agreement that you have in all of your financial decisions. Your checkbook needs to be an open, it needs to be open to your spouse. Your spouse needs to know about all your investments. You need to be able to make sure that your spouse is on board with everything you buy. Yeah. The Fourth area. Let me just step yep. in here. <clears throat> okay. If you find yourself in debt, all right, not having enough, if you're not making it in this area, really get some help. Right. You know, if, if you really are finding yourself in a deficit, get somebody to help mediate this for you. I have seen great success in that way. You know, I, I have some great financial, you know, planners and people, uh, you know, that are really good with money. Let them help you. Let them teach you, you know, those kinds of things because you can get out of debt. You, you know, you, you don't have to live this cycle or this tension and, and help them begin to paint a picture of hope for you. You know, because the two of you, you, you might be seeing a stack of pills and all you see is impossibilities. Get somebody else to give you a fresh point of view and say, you know what, it's not impossible, okay? okay. And, and it will really, really help. And joint agreement is less likely to get you into debt. Yeah. You see, I mean, now it is true that a husband and wife can both agree to go broke. Yeah. Uh, but the point is that a joint agreement is usually going to be a little more conservative yeah. than what either one of you yeah. would, would have done. And let me point out something else, that if you have joint agreement and you go broke, you're not going to be withdrawing any love units. You know, you're not, there's going, nobody to blame but yourself. You, you yeah. did it together. You know, we're you did we're it in together. this together. Right. Well, exactly. you know, it's the way it goes sometimes. Right. But you see, if one of you makes a unilateral decision and you go broke, then that the, person's... The, the finger pointing all comes exactly. out and the blame right. comes exactly. in. Yes. Yeah, this, it's good. Thank you. And as well, during the economic seasons that we're in right now, things are tight. And, you know, we come together, okay, we need to tighten our belt on a few things. Mm -hmm. Well, make sure you're tightening both belts. <laughs> you know, it's not just restraining the one. Also, you know, again, it's the mutual, you know, enthusiastic agreement on this right. and like, we're going to do this together. 
Okay, next one. The next is um, children, discipline, okay? How do you discipline your children? What are you going to teach them how to do? What, how, are, how are you going to train your kids? That should not be done unilaterally. One of you should not decide the punishment for your child. One of you should not decide the rewards for your child. You should make those decisions together and separate from the children. One of the biggest areas of conflict in mar marriage is that one spouse decides that he or she is going to is going to discipline a child for something that he or she thought was was wrong. The other spouse doesn't agree but doesn't know what to do. If you, if you intervene then, then, then you're picking sides on, is in front of the child, which greatly weakens the position that you have. Uh, if you go along with it, you feel that you're, you're hurting your own child on something that you think your spouse is wrong about. So as far as any discipline you do for your children, all of your child-rearing goals, all of the things that you feel are important for the child should be decided apart from the children, separate from the children, and with enthusiasm before you do it. <laughs> so don't do anything. Let your kids run wild until you have enthusiastic <laughs> agreement. This was not written by a child, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Because if you try to get your children to do something where you're not in agreement, Children are smart enough oh, yeah. to divide and conquer. They huh? smell that a mile yep. away. Yeah, exactly. And they will get yeah. stronger and stronger as you and your marriage gets weaker and weaker. And it's interesting. You come into a marriage and uh, then you have children and then, then you think about how you're going to discipline them. Not realizing or discussing how were you raised? What was the discipline in your household? And is it like how I was raised and the discipline in my household? Or is it totally different? Bill and I came from rather different backgrounds. And so we had to discuss and decide what was going to be the course of action regarding discipline. And together we came up with a good solution. We have two beautiful grown children. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm very uh, liberal in, in, my, in, in my views. Joyce is very conservative. And we raised our kids in a way that we could both In other agree. words, you're relaxed you're and happy. she's disciplined. Yeah, she, exactly. she, she's more likely to discipline yeah. the kids than yeah. I am. But between the two of us, we were able to come up with something that was fair and the kids knew. Was it enthusiastic? Yes. Right. We were both okay. pleased with it. Yes. <laughs> I'm just oh, making oh, sure. Yes. Oh, yeah. But you can check on us yeah. anytime you and, want. And, and, the, and the kids turned out great. You see, I, yeah. and, and I think that that there are a lot of different styles of, rear, of raising children. And they're using different styles than we did. Yeah. Yes. I mean, each and pairing will make for a different formula down the road. A different style works for different kids, too. Yeah. I mean, you yes, know, and, and when, when two parents can come to an agreement about how to raise their children, generally that is the wisest decision for that particular child. Mm -hmm. And so my feeling is that it's psychologically you're, you're more, more powerful if you can both agree enthusiastically. Um, you're probably smarter if you can agree enthusiastically. Your kids will end up benefiting. If you do it unilaterally, separately, not only are your kids gonna suffer as a result, but your marriage will suffer. It's, a, it, it's what I call a love buster because you're making an independent decision without the agreement of your spouse, which is gonna withdraw love units. Yeah, yeah, this is very, very important. Uh, one thing that Audrey and I have enjoyed more than anything in our marriage together is our children. Yes. Our children have never been a pain. Our children have never been a problem. Why? Because we've never seen them that way. Mm. They're a joy and they're a gift. You view your children as a pain and a problem, they will be. Let them be a gift to you in your home. Okay, we need to go to our fifth and final one. Okay. Fifth is sex. The question is, do you and your spouse enthusiastically agree about the way you have sex together? It is the fifth of the important conflicts that couples have in marriage. And if you don't get that one resolved, uh, there's going to be a lot of pain and suffering in your marriage. Um, sex is an important emotional need. It has to be met in marriage. Uh, if, if either spouse says that they are unfulfilled, as far as I'm concerned, it should be a problem on the front burner. It should be something you discuss regularly. As we said earlier, you should not make demands. You should not say anything disrespectful. You shouldn't get angry. That will make it less likely. What are your alternatives? 
Your alternative is to put it on the front burner. We need to discuss this. We need to come to an enthusiastic agreement. We need to negotiate about this until we do come to an enthusiastic agreement. And when you have an enthusiastic agreement about sex, not only is the problem solved now for life and you have a great sexual relationship, but instead of withdrawing love units, you're depositing them there you go. in massive quantities. The ultimate goal. <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, you, you, this area of sex, and, and again, um, we live in a different time uh, where uh, sex is just smeared. Uh, it's it, it's um, for young people. It, it becomes a, a form of recreation. Uh, you, you know those types of things. Uh, we bring those into our marriages, uh, and it's it, it is the most intimate most beautiful, most fulfilling, the most safe time that couples need to have with one another. And uh, if, if you're not, f you know, feeling that, then really, you know, let's, let's talk about it. Let's get some help, you know, those kinds of things. Um, Audrey and I, you know, most people uh, know our story. And uh, 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 infidelity, you know, entered into our marriage. And man, did it cause problems, you know, just in, to say the least. And do you think we had issues, you know, with the sex? You bet. But guess what happened? Now, and as a result of this, guess what? We talk about it. Never talked about it for 17 years. I don't want a crisis to enter into your life before you start talking about it. You know, you don't need that kind of a bomb to blow things up to be able to begin to realize. And uh, you know what? You really do. And it's even better when, you know, as Dr. Bill says, be enthusiastic about it, mm -hmm. you know? But, it, 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 you know, Scripture says to be able to be naked and unashamed. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of couples carry a lot of shame, and they want to hide themselves and, and to be open and vulnerable and transparent and honest and intimate, you know, in these areas is very, very difficult for many times. Well, just start. Introduce it. You know, those types of things. And I think you have set s some extremely important uh, guidelines and, and guardrails of safety and protection. It's nothing that we require. It's nothing that we demand. It's nothing that we insist on. You know, uh, it's not. Would we prefer the other? You know, what I'm talking about, we're going to talk about this. All of these areas, not because I'm right and I want to correct you so that you agree with me, but we're going to come together. We're going to mutually agree and create some enthusiasm to put the sizzle back into our marriage that we might enjoy the life that we've always wanted. I, boy, you guys got me all cranked up. <laughs> Here I am just reiterating everything they said. Well said, though. But it is so good. Thank you so very, very much. Again, I appreciate it. Okay, we need to go. And uh, don't go anywhere. We've got a few more minutes left. But the book is Love Busters. We all have them. And we're all discovering them. And we're going to diminish them. We're going to diffuse them. We're going to remove their power in our marriage. We're going to begin to deposit love in one another and begin to experience the marriage that we've always wanted. This is available from us here at New Day Ministries. I encourage you, would you please get a copy for yourselves? Read it through, you know, wrestle it through, begin the conversations that are so vital and important. We'll be back to close the program right after this.